Yes. Dane, excuse me, I'm sorry. Before you get into that, could you just introduce yourself and tell us all yes. who you are for the people yeah, who listen to the recording those, and don't know yeah. you? Yeah, my, a, a little bit of a bio here. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm with this website, geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, Michael Murphy and myself, there's a few of us that are part of that site. I have a background with Bechtel Power Corporation and Renewable Energy. Worked on one of the first solar commercial solar plants in the continental U.S., um, my home was on the world's largest renewable energy magazine. That's how I got onto this issue. Uh, I'd been told about it, but it was frankly very skeptical. And when I moved to Northern California, expecting clean air uh, with with a very large, completely off-grid home, uh, and and started to lose on some days 50, 60, 70, even 80 percent of my solar uptake from these intermittent grid patterns. Clearly, something was wrong. Something was going on in the sky quickly came on the subject of geoengineering, and my life has been on hold ever since, uh, over a decade. Prior to this, I, I, uh, my area of, of study and research was um, climate change and the atmosphere, and that, of course, tailed right into this. And uh, So this is uh, the, the majority of what I've done for the last 10 years. Not a battle I wanted in any sense, but one I just simply felt uh, if it was not stopped, nothing else would matter. I feel that more than ever today. And if, if on the temperature anomalies we see, um, I'm sure everybody's seen these wild swings in temperature, and it's, it's very apparent now they are doing massive manipulation with the jet stream in conjunction with the aerosols. And uh, my conclusion on that, and we can go into Q&A here in a minute because I, I like that best anyway, but um, I believe that the planet is in full-blown meltdown. I'm not an Al Gore fan. I'm not a carbon credit fan, but that does not change the reality on the ground. Geoengineering is appears to be, from my research, the largest single causal factor. We've been not very kind to the planet. I don't think anybody can argue that one, but, but geoengineering is by far the largest wrench in the works that appears to have triggered climate feedback loops. One of those feedback loops is methane expulsion, which appears to be um, completely released or, or triggered at this point. And um, that in conjunction with the shredded ozone layer is certainly a result of geoengineering. Uh, we are in uncharted territory, and the, the methane expulsion is not a century-long event. It's not a decade-long event. It happens over the course of a few years. and it, 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 All available data indicates it's happening now, and this is a global game-changing event. And the paradox is, uh, again, geoengineering appears to be one of the largest single causal factors, the largest causal factor, because geoengineering alters wind patterns along with HARP, which then alters ocean currents. Now we have ocean currents that used to turn south from the Atlantic before they went into the Arctic. Now they go straight into the Arctic. That's part of the reason the methane hydrates have thawed. Shredded ozone, another reason they've thawed. And so as the methane releases, uh, many people might have heard the methane is 20 times more potent than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. But in fact, that's over a 100-year time horizon. Over a 10-year time horizon, it's over 100 times more potent. So uh, the magnitude of this cannot be overstated. And the reservoir that's releasing in the East Siberian shelf of the Arctic is massive. And it, it, it has the potential to extinguish life on Earth, that reservoir alone. So um, again, the paradox is the, the more they spray, the more they apparently feel they have to spray in order to cover up the damage they've already done. It's, it's painting us straight into a corner, but it's all they know how to do. It's all they're, they're geared to do. It's, it's what their uh, money-making bonanza is. So um, anyway, I, I feel at this point, and I'll go into Q&A here in a second, that, that we are really at the apex here, and the temperatures are changing radically. There's temperatures in some places in the Arctic, right, in, in the last... Uh, 30, 45 days that have been 50 degrees above normal. And there's huge swings. There's other areas that have been below normal, like Alaska. But it just depends on where they're ice nucleating, which if anybody doesn't know what that is, it, it appears that almost every precipitation vent now is being ice nucleated. That's chemical nucleation. It's a chemical process by which snow can be created at, uh, according to the patents we have, of up to 50 degrees. We see the same thing happening on the ground shouldn't be snowing at those temperatures, obviously, but as this nucleation process continues, it appears to cool the air mass below it temporarily. And in Northern California, we had temperatures as low as 20 degrees below uh, some two, two, three weeks back, uh, not far from where I live. 
and now we're uh, up pushing 80 degrees. And uh, same thing, Atlanta, a little over a week ago, Atlanta, Georgia was 85 degrees. Uh, it snowed three days later. People should really question this, obviously. And uh, the nucleation process appears to be their last card. We don't know what's in these chemicals. We're seeing very anomalous snow that stays frozen. And um, ponds that are packed with this stuff that stay frozen long after freezing temperatures are gone, the chemical nucleation process appears to continue on actually gassing some of the water out of those ponds. They're doing over Siberia right now. is completely buried in snow. Um, the radar, we can see the ice nucleating. You can see what was a rain cell that flashes out the snow as it's, it's got this material dumped on it. So anyway, um, I'll go to Q&A, but I, I believe right now that what they have triggered is so cataclysmic, and, and paleo data backs this up, paleoclimatic climatic data, um, that they now are in total desperation trying to cover up what they've helped to cause, and now the stakes are as high as they could be. And even to, to put this in perspective, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, AMIG is the acronym, a lot of geoscientists there, uh, Ken Caldera is one, if anybody's familiar with his name, but their latest proposals to stop this methane are to use the ionosphere heaters, which are the heart facilities around the globe, and try to use opposing frequencies to nuke the atmosphere in, in a desperate and, and completely destructive attempt to degrade the methane before it completely saturates the atmosphere. So this is total desperation mode, and I, I think that we're all in for quite a ride from here. But I, my belief from all my research is that if, if they don't stop geoengineering, if they don't allow the planet to respond, if they don't allow the hydrological cycle to resume, quit poisoning the boreal forests, quit shredding the ozone layer, if they don't allow the planet to respond to its own, I believe our, our future looks bleak indeed. Dane, it was just a couple months ago I first heard about the methane issue. I'd never heard that before. And uh, could you explain how that works to people who've never heard about that? I think a lot of people have not even heard about that before. Methane. I mean, how, did, how are they, how is the spraying actually facilitating the methane release in a positive feedback cycle? Uh, again, you know, there, uh, I, I, I can't in, in good conscience hang it completely around the neck of geoengineering. I mean, we certainly have done great harm to our planet. But that being said, it does appear that geoengineering is the single greatest causal factor. Again, there are certain issues that are crystal clear scientifically. The geoengineering particulates shred ozone period. There is absolutely no debate scientifically about that fact. We have massive northern and southern hemisphere ozone holes. Really all available data points toward geoengineering being the cause, not CFCs, not chlorofluorocarbons, but uh, geoengineering as they've been at this for about six decades, and that's about the time the ozone holes, really, uh, southern hemisphere started to develop, northern hemisphere shortly after. And um, so you have more of the sun's thermal energy penetrating the atmosphere now. You have, although they can create, and they do, with between HARP maneuvering the jet stream and the ice nucleated particulates and the simple blocking of the sun, they can and do create massive cooling events over huge areas. But it absolutely appears to be at the cost of a much worsened overall warming. So it truly is cutting your nose off to spite your face. And as they alter, as I mentioned earlier, they, they alter wind currents, which alters ocean currents. Now you have warm water going to the Arctic. Methane is the greatest source of carbon uh, that has the potential to release from the atmosphere, bar none. And this one reservoir alone in the East Siberian Shelf is thought to contain some 10,000 gigatons of methane. It's this frozen methane on the seafloor. If only 60 of that 10,000 gigatons released, that would increase by 400% the total greenhouse gas to date. Only 60 of that 10,000. So you can get an idea of the magnitude of that. If any significant percentage of that reservoir releases, it's, it's game over on planet Earth. So um, I don't think they can hide this for long. It's changing temperatures by the day. And I, I think uh, they will try to spin geoengineering into some last-ditch save-all, and it's important that enough people understand it's not a cure but a curse so that when they try to sell this to us, people will already know better. But that's how the methane is released. It's been happening for many decades. Bermuda Triangle, that's methane release, not aliens. When, this, when these methane 
fields release, it aerates the ocean like a bottle of champagne. Ships have no buoyancy, they go to the bottom. So this has been happening for a long time. Uh, but the Arctic uh, reservoir is very, very large, and it's also acidifying the ocean. As the methane releases, much of it dissolves in the, in the seawater as it reaches the surface, and the oceans are acidifying right now at breakneck speed. So this is a multi-edge sword, and uh, none of it good. Okay, so... So to make this simple for people, they're shredding the ozone layer. More sunlight is reaching the methane depots or these more methane thermal, uh, reservoirs. More, more and then the methane is being released, causing a further heating, which is then increasing. It's acting like positive feedback and just increasing the, the whole cycle. Is that basically yes, right in yes. a nutshell? Yes, but it's more of the sun's thermal energies, not necessarily direct sunlight. Because, again, uh, global dimming right now, another term many are not familiar with, is um, fully 20% on planet Earth. That means over the last five decades, 20% of the sun's direct rays no longer reach the surface of the planet, again, a result of geoengineering. So, I mean, the, the amount of decimation being caused by geoengineering, it can't be quantified. Again, it's shredding the ozone, altering wind currents, releasing methane, poisoning everything that lives, the boreal forests, which are the lungs of the planet, the northern latitude forests, Siberia, the Pacific Northwest. I, I mean, I... I spent my life in the forest, and, and it's, it, it looks absolutely horrific. I just came in prior to making this call, and the devastation is, is uh, it's cataclysmic. And so now you have these forests that were the lungs of the planet that were a carbon sink that absorbed carbon. Now they are a carbon source. They're emitting carbon because they are dying. So, uh, I mean, there's nothing that's not being harmed by geoengineering. It is harming everything. But the sun's thermal energy, Russ, uh, again, it's not... Uh, always in the form of direct sunlight, and it's like a cloudy day on the beach. You know, you can still get sunburnt. And and another part of this feedback loop is the Arctic ice cap. Many people, the global warming debate rages on, and it, and it really should not. Um, although there is a small section of Antarctica that has, in fact, increased the sea ice slightly, and that we fully believe is from ice nucleation, areas that it did not snow before, did no precipitation because it was too cold. The, water, the air didn't contain enough moisture to, to precipitate. Now it does have enough moisture. It is precipitating, and there's sea ice forming. But that doesn't mean it's getting colder. It's not getting colder. And in the case of the Arctic ice cap, it almost completely imploded this year. Media is not covering this. It, during most of the melt season, the Arctic ice cap was losing 100,000 square kilometers of surface area a day. Near the end of the ice season, the melt season, it was 130,000 square kilometers a day. It's not expected to last more than two or three more years. No ice. Again, back to the methane. You, instead of the surface of the ice reflecting 90% of the sun's thermal energy, now the sea absorbs 90 plus percent of that thermal energy. So add that increased absorption of sunlight from the open seawater, add the ocean currents that are now delivering warm water, add the increased thermal energy from the sun, from the shredded ozone, Bad mix, bad combination, methane releases, causes heating, more ice melt, more absorption, positive feedback loop. Very, very clear, easy to understand. All right, let me, let me ask you some hard questions uh, real quick because I know this people, everybody is asking themselves this and they respect what you think um, and they, they'd like to know what you, what you think, I think. Um, uh, how long until this process affects every soul on earth? How long until it's a, an actual, an, a, you know, something that nobody, even the people who are trying to deny most and go on with their lives, have to deal with? I, I, based on the data I see, I, I, I don't believe they'll be able to hide this past the end of this year, um, perhaps not even that long. And I, I believe that the ramifications from this event are unfolding so rapidly